How do you play when it's all on the line? Let's set the stage. It's the Six Invitational, Rainbow Six's pinnacle tournament, with teams playing to win $1 million, become world champions, and lift the hammer, Siege's most iconic trophy. W7M faces their Brazilian rivals, FaZe Clan, in a showdown of epic proportions. They've clawed their way to a decisive map 5, but FaZe looks unbeatable. With their opponents having reached match point, W7M's dreams hang by a thread. One mistake and it's all over. But the game isn't done yet. And if there's any team that can do it, it would be W7M. The odds seem insurmountable, but despite it all, they might just script the greatest comeback in esports history. Let's see how it goes. W7M is playing a three-floor extended roam on a basement defense, with Fenrir and Valkyrie locking down the top floor, Mira and Castle holding their fallback to sight on the main floor, and Wamai guarding rushes while supporting the main floor defenders through holes in the floor. Together, the defensive matrix is a tough nut to crack, with every single player having at least one teammate nearby in order to support them in a fight. As FaZe start their attack, JV on the castle sees Zofia open up both the castle barricades protecting the storage window. He's letting his team know, guys, they're holding our cutoff, we're not going to be able to rotate down storage to get back to site. While this is happening, Keys and Herds on the Fenrir and Valk are starting to feel some pressure up top. They hear the connector wall get opened as Ace opens up their IT breach. They're expecting a bunch of pressure to come from their east side and start getting ready for that. What they don't realize though, is that all this noise was just an elaborate distraction by FaZe. They already have a player lower warehouse and are getting ready to stab the defense in the back. The whole thing comes down to JV on the castle playing inside of control room, but he wins the fight and stops the top floor players from being completely isolated. Even though JV won that fight, however, FaZe still have a few tricks up their sleeve. While Keys and Herds were distracted by the breach, Souls on the Ram has taken control of Lower Warehouse, and the Ace of Handy has rotated over to the rafters window and is about to make a play to open up the round. Cyber starts flashing for his teammate, and Handy jumps in the window to start taking fights IT, all while Souls aggresses storage to try and equalize the man count. Grand final points! Cyber wanting to push in towards rafters, he lost his life! Now the key position still held firmly by W7M, and Handy again onto Herds, shuts him down, three versus three! Once the dust settles, W7M find themselves a man down, with a ton of time on the board. Keys decides he needs to make a play in order to try and equalize the man count. But look at this, FaZe are expecting some aggression out of W7M, and all of their players are holding, waiting for the flank. This should turn into a 3 versus 1. Can they convert it from here? They've done all the hard work. Nade and KZ, the only two players standing Souls. in their way. Souls! He can't win it! KZ keeps hope alive! But Souls accidentally stands up mid gunfight! Keys has gone away with highway robbery and manages to equalize the man count. He quickly turns and sprints back to site, knowing FaZe have hardly any drones left to gather info, and he'll simply be able to sit and rat while FaZe face checks all of the angles in sight, with no real hope of winning. And Handy, side by side, brother in arms, and now the drop from Handy, expecting one to be behind the tank, but not to be. And now he questions where they very well may be on the site itself. Vidiking as well. Well, there he is. KZ, you wanted to find him. And he finds you. So is made. This one's not over yet. W7M just barely managed to survive that last round, but there's still so much left to do. They still have to win four more rounds just to be able to reach overtime. And while they aren't done yet, the situation is all but hopeless. This round, W7M are defending the top floor. Contrary to the previous round, they're committing to a horizontal extension, with just Philippox on the Valkyrie playing on the floor below. His goal is to control the area below the site, threatening to catch a phase player off guard on a rotate below, before threatening to get a C4 kill in the late round. FaZe, for their part, have done an excellent job bringing all the tools they'll need to counter this defense by W7M. They have the Thatcher to counter the Cade, IQ to deal with the Valk, two hard breachers to open up every single wall surrounding the site, and a Ying to overwhelm the defense with flashbangs and quickly take difficult to clear areas of the map, such as rafters and top water. Their goal is to open up the whole site, forcing W7M to play inside of a tiny box before transitioning into a late round execute through rafters and top water. The round starts with FaZe doing a ton of preparatory work, opening all of the outside walls and making a ton of noise on the north and east side. JV sees Thatcher, Thermite, and Ace Utility going off on the IT wall, so he calms to his team. Guys, there's a ton of presence IT side. I think the hit is going to come from here. So Philippox starts making his way below the breach in order to use a C4 to devastate FaZe if they decide to push in. But what's this? Cyber is in storage? While W7M were distracted by the breach above, he's gotten in below and is in the perfect position to be able to take out the Valkyrie. Philippox down below and we have a look. A potential 1v1 
But the lead box falls off of that position momentarily through storage, goes Cypher. And the timing could not be ever present. The swing comes through. Felipox doesn't have a clue. And to make matters worse, while all of this was going down, Souls has managed to take Rafter's control, giving face control of everything south of sight. They're now perfectly set up to flash out their remaining defenders, get kills off of a backstab, and plant the bomb. W7M need desperately to find a pick to recover the round. Currently, he's been the clutch master for this defensive unit, but JV92, he's the one to step up. As Souls flashes out the sight players, the backstab starts to hit. But JV is so aware. He manages to take out KDS, but FaZe still have so much util to clear out these last players. W7M needs one more big play to take them over the line, and Herds on the Legion finds a ridiculous timing to tuck himself in IT and try to make that play. Grand final. Candela thrown, one more available in the back pocket for Souls. 40 seconds remaining in the round, handy, close. Tries to bank off of that wall. The flash, Souls will fall. No more Candela's, nicely done from Hurd. Starting to get involved, but it is FaZe. They bring it back to a three on three in Cyber as well. And he can get almost another one. Oh. It's cemented, no. Two versus two. Nade still has a nitrous hell and they get that through Hurd. Here he comes, he makes it. more rounds. After winning the last two sites, W7M are now forced to play control room and storage, the weakest site in their rotation. Similar to their basement defense, they are extending to hold on to server and command. The idea here is to make all sorts of vertical holes above the site, and then rely on those plus the solace of herds in order to deny plant from above. FaZe begin their attack in the same way as their prior ones, opening up IT, and connector and beginning to threaten an entry from the north and east sides of the map. They've been conditioning W7M to expect this, but they've never actually pushed the north side. This time, however, Cyber is here and he's threatening to push in if there's any free space. But W7M are a world-class team and they've got the perfect read. Hot off a round winning play in the previous round, Herds is in the perfect spot to deny Cyber taking any easy control. He shoots a drone to slow phase down and peels off to make sure he stays alive. After clearing out Herds, FaZe slow things down to make sure they have all the pieces in place to absolutely devastate W7M's top floor hold. They're set up with two, including the Ying top water, one rafters, one IT, and one connector ready to go electric. They know that W7M have a player pillar and a player control, and those players are about to die. Watch for this attack. Two drones is all that remains though, so it's not a lot, not a lot of information, and an OP kill from Nade. With the one and only Nitro Cell that they had in the back pocket, it gets rid of Bitter King. Now the push from Cyber. Oh! Oh! Special. What the hell was that? Keys goes prone behind a desk and pops up at the perfect time to take out two players? He went up against the entirety of FaZe and managed to take two of them with him. Pair this with Nade finding a C4 kill through the floor of IT and JV escaping through the open hatch back to lounge and FaZe are suddenly in a bad spot. W7M have done all the heavy lifting to win the round, but can they close it out? They got two. Two very important Candelas, but there's a warden on the board in Nade. He is very pivotal. For W7M, all they need to do is hold angles on sites. Couple of shots over the ward garrison. Oh, yeah, that's clean. Nice shot. What a way to start. Shuts down herds. At this point now, W7M, you do not need to peek. 20 seconds. Time arguably on the side of W7M. Candela thrown. Entry has been made. But the leap box gets on the flank. Souls, though. Now tries to respond. Can't find the headshot. Doesn't even get the down. The leap box stays alive. At least enough to deny in terms of time, of which is running out for Souls. He has to stick the plan. We know he cannot. We know we get another round. Two rounds. They're so close. The crowd has started losing their mind. The entire stadium is on their feet, and it looks like maybe, just maybe, they might be able to do it. It isn't over yet for FaZe, though. They just need to take their time, slow it down, and... To win a six invitational grand final with another from this... Down. What is that? Well, that's not great. W7M take an early advantage and can now afford to play a little bit more conservatively. They set up to play a really tight net of crossfires and refrags all across the ground floor. Now that they're up a man, they want to trade out numbers until they win the round. For their part, now that they're down numbers, FaZe decide to forego their top floor attack in favor of trying to lurk directly into the main floor setup in order to try and isolate 1v1 gunfights. Just because they got the kill, they've not fallen back just yet. They're still in the staircases, still with Solas up right, of course, looking for those drones, shutting down the intel game. It is. Alive. No, way. no way! The shots are just not landing! 
KDS gets smoked by the cross between JV and Herd's lower warehouse. Phase are down two. There's no way they win the round. W7M are doing it. They're one round away from completing the comeback. They're going to make it all the way to overtime. I can't believe it. Vic for W7M, oh. but Handy's been so strong and finicking out of nowhere. Maybe that plot armor's got a hole in it after all. Down to Herd. He falls. Phase might just flip the script. Oh, what the hell just happened? Let's break it down. As you'll remember, after losing the first pick, FaZe recognized that they needed to isolate players in order to bring the round back. KDS died trying to find a pick lower garage, but the rest of his team found success in their fights. Handy finds one up top through IT, then Vidiking finds one Cargo trying to rotate back to site, before doubling with Souls to take out herds isolated in storage. This is really bad for W7M. They've thrown away their man advantage, and with 80 seconds left in the round, FaZe has all the time in the world to clear out the last two defenders, go for a plant, and win the hammer. How will they close it out? Both Souls and Vita King are out of drones, so Handy starts working to gather intel for their late round execute. FaZe's IGL Vita King recognizes that since they still have the ram and breaching charges on the ash, their best option is to open up a ton of vertical pressure above tank in order to force the defenders to play inside of assembly and nano before dropping the animus hatch and going for a plant in the tucked corner with cover from vert and cargo. They open up vert all across control before going to open up the animus hatch ants. <laughs> No. Way. FaZe don't have enough hard breach to open the hatch. This is a colossal blunder. And now, with low time and no drones left to gather relevant info, they have no other option than to force cargo stairs and hope to trade out. W7M have a chance. Can they capitalize? Surely it doesn't come down to the brothers. Nade and Handy. 20 seconds. There's one for Polly Pops on a Vidiking. It very well may come down to the twins themselves to settle this final. 15, 15 seconds, seconds and the drop go. from Souls, playing behind Handy, who still needs to get the kid onto the floor. Yeah. And Souls will fall to me. Handy in the one versus two, deep into red time. He can't finish it. He's a brother. He's a bloody brother. One more round. Bays are shell-shocked, and their coach calls a timeout to talk to his players and try to get the game over the line before it goes to OT. For this last round, W7M are defending the top floor again, though with a substantially different lineup than the previous time they were here. Their last defense focused on using C4s, Smokes, and the Valkyrie to deny any sort of plant attempt from FaZe. This time, they're leaning super heavily into bringing traps, hoping that with all the pressure on their shoulders, FaZe may not properly clear them out, leading to an easy round win for the defense. After their timeout, FaZe seem like they've decided to actually commit to a north and east side clear of the map. Their coach has talked to them to try and calm their nerves, and they're going to really slow it down for this attack. FaZe go through the same early round motions of opening up the connector wall and the IT wall, before starting angling to get control of rafters. But this time, they see W7M is giving them all of rafters control for free by fully reinforcing off the rafters triple wall. FaZe are thinking, this is great! We can take the space, use the thermite to open up the wall, commit to an attack top water, and get a plant down on the bomb chassis where the indestructible floor makes the Solus of Philippox useless to deny the plant from below. But Solus is still below. And with her ability to see all of the attacking side's drones, she has the unique ability to find timings and slip the attacker's net in order to capitalize on tiny holes on their attack. Hold those angles, expect the swings to come around. They don't have the ying, they don't have any easier to break this apart. Well, Handy's pushed forward. Advanced position, exothermic for Polybox. Can he play? Box. I think he denies it. I think he, I don't know if that gets opened up. Hard to see from I this position. So. I think he's denied it. Headshot so close. Ah! After Philippox kills the Thermite without being traded, the round is essentially over. FaZe attempt to collapse onto the site and trade out. Over the blue we go! Souls can't win the initial shot! And Finiking for... They've done it. W7M have completed the most arduous comeback in the history of Siege. The 10,000 fans spectating are roaring their name, but the onus is on them now. Can they take this momentum and convert it into a world championship? Two round wins is all it takes. Will W7M be the ones to lift the hammer? They start overtime on the defense, choosing to run back the top floor site from the previous round, making very few changes to their setup and their lineup. Last round was a lockout, so why change what isn't broken? 
The only major difference on their side is the choice to bring the bandit over the legion. This is in order to slow down the attack even further and force three attackers to come together to guarantee walls get open. Faze start working towards an execute. They spend about a minute in the mid round gathering information and looking for a gap. They see on this rafters drone that W7M is giving them rafters for free, so Vita King starts working to take the free space. Meanwhile, KDS and Handy start working to clear out space connector and electrical creating a pinch onto site. While all of this is going down, Souls is also on drones, looking to try and find some sort of gap towards top water. And what's this? On a drone hidden away above the staircase, he sees JV is isolated, playing an aggressive position. This is how FaZe can open up the round. He goes to make a play and take the fight on JV. But JV is just too damn good! He somehow wins the fight and secures the opening pick for his team instead. But the advantage is short-lived, as KDS and Cyber battle back Electric and Top Water. And the opening kill for JV92. Frag grenade thrown. It's not that deadly. This is even more impactful. The Nitro Cell from KZ, though, misses the mark. Still one available for Herds. The swing is a little bit whiffy, but it doesn't matter. Elsewhere still the advantage with W7M. KZ oh. loses the close contact back swing, and suddenly a three versus three. FaZe have stabilized the round, but they still need to make a play in order to win it. Having just killed JV top water, they decide to stack two water in order to play trades in command, while KDS pinches from electrical. FaZe have the perfect read. They are so good at finding the best way to win the round and then executing on it. With no util except for one flashbang in the pocket of Handy, they act. Solus also in play. Put holes to deal with, that's not mine, shot out. Flashbang, force them to be full white. Handy for the cross, it's successful. Feet showing behind the desk, and that's a nice kill. Handy up by himself, and one versus two. Shot from Handy, through the soft wall. Philippe Hook stays alive. What just happened? In the blink of an eye, the round goes from a three versus three to a one versus one. FaZe had the read, but W7M countered it so perfectly. Herds is unbelievably aware of the pinch and manages to take out KDS, while Philippox flanks at the perfect time and takes out Cyber. Handy manages to trade him, but in the 1v1 with almost no time left, he doesn't have much he can do apart from go for the kill. That's the one versus one behind the bomb chassis. Handy's got himself on the fuser. The pistol's down. Oh. Oh. What a game this has been. From 6-1 down to match point. If W7M take it here, this will go down in history as the greatest comeback Siege has ever seen. They need to win one attacking round to clinch it. W7M know that FaZe are roaming, so they start to formulate a plan. They want to open up the Animus Wall, walk in the tank, and plant in this corner. They have a read that FaZe have a super weak sight presence, and want to punish them by going fast. FaZe are set up to deal with this though. They have this hatch open, which allows them to peek the attackers if they ever try to funnel in through Animus. In theory, this means that W7M need to take full control of Warehouse in order to ensure that FaZe can't devastate their push. But W7M has another plan. While JV, Nade, and Herds work to open up the sight walls, Keys opens up some back pressure, connector, and IT. He wants to keep FaZe committed to the roam while his teammates set up for a sight hit and prevent them from simply giving up all of their map control in order to contest the hatch. Once the sight walls are open, JV rotates upstairs to hold an angle onto the hatch from outside the warehouse wall. This is in order to deny FaZe control of lower warehouse and prevent them from peeking the hatch. His position is the linchpin of W. 7M's attack. If he dies in this position, the players below the hatch are sitting ducks. Easy kills for the phase players remaining on the roam. W7M start their attack. Nade works into Animus and Keys jumps into storage. Nade knows he's safe from above with JV watching his hatch, and Keys is expecting that the phantom pressure from IT wall has forced any top players back. But Cyber has read the fake and is playing in the perfect position. W7M have three players pressuring site. Vita King on the smoke is telling his teammates, Hey, these guys are hitting like super hard. I need help now. And so, having killed the one player storage, Cyber goes to peek the hatch. WCM, they cannot proceed with the current plan. Oh. JV! But JV is ready for him, and now, having gotten the pick onto the roamer, he goes to take some space storage. But look who's waiting for him. What an acute angle! More. Oh, More to come, no! Handy! JV isn't ready for Handy. And now, W7M have nothing to deny the hatch retake. Handy can shut down their entire push. In this grand final! on the other side, wanting to be the annoying brother, and Handy will fall through the hatch. Oh my god. At the most crucial moment, Handy has a colossal whiff, leaving W7M with everything they need in order to go for a plant. This is it. With the championship on the line, can they do it? And it's the smokes that are stalling out this push, so W7M have to wait for their moment. It's all direct. And... Ah! 